Good morning, everyone. Hope all of you are having a great day. Welcome to what is the first in a series of conversations on cloud computing that we've planned for this year. Today's roundtable discussion on engineering cloud is the first session of the year under NASCOM's Cloud Advocacy Program. Through conversations like these, we hope to share with you how cloud is impacting various industries and how business functions are being adapted for the cloud. One of the most conventional of business functions is research and development, especially engineering research and development. The image that comes to mind is that of a physical lab with a lot of equipment and people hunched over tables strewn with technical drawings and drawing tools. But today, a number of these functions are getting heavily software-centric, driven by technologies like AR, VR, MR, simulation software, digital twins, etc. In today's context, by engineering cloud, we mean exactly that, carrying out engineering R&D functions on a cloud platform, including activities ranging from designing, prototyping, and testing to technical documentation, MRO, and aftermarket services. In today's discussion, we will explore not only what functions are moving to the cloud, but also how these are being engineered for the cloud. We have an eminent set of leaders and we will cover perspectives from independent software vendors, engineering service providers, and customer enterprises as well. To moderate this session, I have Parik Jain, who is the founder and CEO of EIIR Trend, a research and advisory firm focusing on engineering, IoT, Industry 4.0, and R&D. Parikh is a very well-known figure in the technology space and is a thought leader and prominent influencer on social media as well. He has over 20 years of experience and has worked in a variety of firms and roles across service providers, manufacturing enterprises, consulting and analyst firms before starting EIIR trend. Parikh has a BTEC from IIT Delhi and an MBA from IIM Bangalore. He also is an adjunct faculty at AIT Thailand, where he teaches Industry 4.0 courses for working professionals. He likes to re research and write about industry trends on engineering and Industry 4.0. He has authored over 200 research studies and provided over 500 media posts to various global and Indian media outlets. He also likes to interact, discuss, and share information and insights on social media platforms where he has over 100,000 followers. I'm one of his followers and absolutely love all the engineering videos he shares on LinkedIn. Pari, great to have you with us. Over to you to take this session forward. Thank you, Diksha. And thank you, Nascom, to bringing us all together. Today, the topic we'll be discussing an emerging trend, engineering cloud. And to make it real, we have esteemed panelists here comprising of engineering service providers, ISVs, and enterprises. And hopefully the discussion here will inspire and guide enterprises either to start or accelerate their cloud journey. So in terms of time, we are not doing detailed introductions in the beginning. So we'll request the speakers when they speak first time, please introduce themselves. So let's start right away. The first question is to set the context like how do you define engineering cloud? What kind of trends and shifts you're seeing in the market? And finally, what is the business value, especially from the engineering perspective? So we can start from Abhishek and then Gautman can join in. Yeah, thank you Parikh and Diksha for the wonderful context setting. Uh, this is Abhishek Goel. Uh, I run the IoT and the digital engineering practice for Infosys globally. Uh, and as part of that, uh, cloud obviously is one of the main constituent uh, solution uh, for the digitalization of the various engineering functions. So engineering cloud uh, is basically how we perform the engineering functions on cloud infrastructure. Uh, how do we make the entire process, the life cycle, right from the design to uh, engineering, to manufacturing, to fulfillment, and then the after sale service. How do we make the entire process, including the supply chain and the ERP and the PLM, how do we make the entire value chain uh, more digitalized, more integrated, more collaborative, including collaboration with the suppliers, the customers, the partners. So basically bringing all these functions, all the processing on cloud to enable uh, the better collaboration and access to all the people. Uh, that is basically uh, cloud for engineering or engineering on cloud. Uh, I want to highlight that it's different from the 
engineering for cloud because engineering for cloud means that you are basically looking at the infrastructure stack the compute the ram the server capacity the cpu uh, processing power for the cloud infrastructure that is purely an infra play i'm not talking about that that obviously is an important function that's outside the realm of this discussion here i'm taking more of a business view how companies are taking their r and d uh, their simulation their designs even their manufacturing to cloud so that's engineering cloud uh, in my definition the idea is to connect optimize digitalize uh, uh, to uh, bring energy, bringing efficiencies and uh, effectiveness in the operations uh, the engineering operations and also having smarter engineering products uh, what we are seeing in the market as a trend is uh, typically if you look at the cloud adoption in the industry worldwide it's a 300 billion dollar industry and engineering cloud is probably only 13 14 billion as one of, as per one of the research and the early adopters uh, were the erp and the plm functions those were mostly enterprise packages uh, that were taken to cloud uh, and which were mostly virtual mostly uh, used by the top floor people but of late we are seeing uh, i represent infosys of late we are seeing that even the traditional manufacturing functions uh, like mes or mom or uh, even the integration with the supply chain is being taken to cloud uh, and this has become particularly uh, relevant in the in the pandemic times because the entire supply chain got disrupted uh, everyone was working virtually there was a greater need to collaborate across the value chain including suppliers partners various other uh, tier 1 tier 2 players and how do we do the real time collaboration how do we exchange data seamlessly how do we provide access to people uh, remotely uh while there was a constraint on the actual manufacturing the physical aspect of it but there was also a constraint on the on the virtual collaboration so cloud actually the power of cloud became much more important in that context uh because that way they were able to collaborate much better they were able to share the information much faster uh and i i want to give one two examples uh, just to make it more real for all of us uh for one of our industrial motor manufacturing customers out of europe uh, they wanted to change the entire process from a eto which is engineering to order to a configuration to order configured to order cto and if you make this change there will be enough changes in system happening real time and how do we propagate the changes from the design to the engineering to manufacturing and also to suppliers so that is only possible if you have a digital thread across these functions and digital thread is enabled largely by the cloud ecosystem because you can bring all the data together on a cloud uh, uh, on a cloud uh, a pass or a saas application and uh, bring it all together uh, so it helped actually uh, the customers to uh, reduce the number of changes reduce the cost and improve the time to market uh, and that was actually uh, really uh, really very useful from the business perspective one more example i want to take from the sustainability and the safety perspective uh, a power generation company they developed a real time monitoring solution on cloud to manage the hazardous uh, materials and the dispatching and the end of life management so with the real time visibility on the cloud the tracking and the tracing of the material through the life cycle became much more compliant and easier for them uh, i want to share some data uh, uh, we are seeing in fact as per, as per one of the research from a website called iotnaltics.com uh today almost 50% of the plm and erp are on cloud already uh and over the next two years most of the cto cios they want to take their application workloads to cloud including the engineering functions including mes and the cloud mes market mes we have found is the most difficult uh, application to take it to cloud because it has to integrate with the the skeda the plc systems and various warehousing functions and there's a lot of hardware integration human machine connectivity also involved so people typically have a concern that if i take it to cloud what will happen to my uh, data security will there be a latency between the on prem and the cloud applications how will the integration happen without drops uh, so that's one that's a difficult one but we are still expecting that market to go to almost 3 billion by 2026 
uh, just last point on the benefits, uh, what at least we have seen in our own examples with our clientele, uh, the, the time for design to manufacturing uh, typically comes down by 10 to 15%. Once we embrace industry 4.0 along with the power of cloud, the change management for the engineering functions, the first time designing uh, improves by 10 to 15%. Wastage also, we have seen in the case of pharma industries, there's something called a golden match, wherein uh, they have to do iterations on the recipe uh, and they have to control the, the temperature, the pressure, the humidity of the bioreactors. So if you have a distal twin on the cloud, so we can predict the golden match much faster. And we have seen the wastage going down by almost 15, 20%. It's a very, very costly uh, process. And that's a huge, huge saving. Uh, we've also seen the efficiencies the overall equipment effectiveness, the operation efficiencies uh, go up by almost 15, 20% through real-time monitoring and predictive maintenance. The on-time delivery, again, through the distal thread, the integration of the ERP, the MES, the IoT, the, the SCADA systems, again, uh, the real-time delivery as per also goes up once we have the ISC 95 stack uh, fully automated on the cloud. And obviously, uh, safety, health, environment is a big thing coming up, and that's also getting enhanced because we are able to do real-time monitoring, uh, remote monitoring. Uh, we're also able to do video analytics, uh, particularly in the case of mining uh, operations. We have seen that as a good use case. So overall, I think uh, although this segment has been a bit uh, laggard in terms of adoption of cloud, but I think uh, cloud is the future. Thank you, Abhishek. Gautman? Yeah. Thank you, Abhishek. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Gautaman. I take care of uh, the global delivery for uh, digital business unit part of uh, Scient. Uh, uh, Abhishek has covered uh, most of the points. I just wanted to give a few more pointers based on our experience. So the definition point of view, so what uh, see as engineering cloud is nothing but uh, the integrated collaboration platform for end-to-end -end product lifecycle management. So starting from concept, design, modeling, simulation, manufacturing, and aftermarket, which is integrated and connected both from the private cloud or in the cloud part of it, the VC as an engineering cloud, uh, getting into the integrated platform for new product development. That's a one part. When it comes to the benefit, so most of the benefits Abhishek covered. So few other things uh, what we see from our experience is uh, uh, basically one is uh, a single source of truth for uh, all the stakeholders in uh, multiple functions, starting from the sales to the design to manufacturing to aftermarket. So the information needed for different stakeholders at different stages of the product life cycle at the right data, right avail uh, data for their usage and consumption is made available with the engineering cloud as an integrated platform. Say for example, for a supply chain person, their information related to the procurement, the dimensional details, the cost, and the shoot costing information made available so that he can able to negotiate well and uh, arrive at the right cost for the product and parts which he is procuring. That's one is such example. That's a one thing. So single source of truth is the real uh, benefit we see with the engineering cloud. And that's a trend towards uh, multiple applications across vertical. And another uh, benefit what we see is uh, the kind of experience. experience Experience is a one place major role. So we call XE when the engineering cloud comes into the picture, multiple uh, stakeholders experiences. So one is design to experience. So when we talk about the design, so integration of the CAD tools, design tools, modeling, simulation, and the associated uh, analysis tools will provide the integrated product development with model-based design, model-based system engineering, which basically everything is configured so that in case if it is a for a product under new a new product introduction or new product development or changes to the existing product you just to do changes in your model it gets impacted everywhere that's a real benefit so that experience for the designers and associated stakeholders is completely different with this engineering cloud in the same way when it goes for the manufacturing it is manufactured uh, experience manufactured to a experience starting from like abhishek mentioned the when there is an order through erp and to uh, 
planning, scheduling, sequencing, then the complete virtual validation of the entire manufacturing process through the virtual tools and uh, linking that with actual real-time data through IoT sensor, like what is the inventory, what is the production file, connecting with the machine data and see what is the actual uh, uh, production uh, happening and dynamically correcting whatever the course correction needed so that we will be able to meet the production target is a real experience for the production and the manufacturing team so that they will able to do with the better efficient manufacturing with the high quality and the mainly the supply chain because we all know the kind of challenges we have in the supply chain the without overstocking and without uh, the stock out conditions just in time so that they have everything is in place with the optimal inventory cost and any product with the standardized process we will able to do across the world any product to be manufactured so that they will be able to meet the demand that's another experience we see with respect to the manufactured uh, manufacturing team the third one is in the aftermarket so we call the behavior to the experience where the product behavior product performance and associated the benefits for the end user in terms of in automotive domain like the connected car experience and also the remote diagnostics and addressing the problem in the field remotely and the remote operations that's another experience the end users also getting and also the aftermarket team both from service technician and also the sales support team uh, having with in this integrated platform so finally this entire thing we see as yeah, we call a kind of a framework like uh, the digital thread which abhishek covered digital thread plus a digital twin so that everything is gets integrated starting from your concept design everything and data comes so that you will able to see the entire performance and giving the better experience from the customer to sales to aftermarket team that's a real uh, benefit we see and this is a trend we see with uh, across verticals and uh, numerous examples and uh, in art aero auto and in healthcare uh, life sciences uh, customers we see adopting this culture and uh, in point pockets because it is not that everyone anyone is implemented end to end so one of the customer implemented that complete the design process design automation just to get one change requirements the including integration of the requirements tool and the changes to the design uh, analysis and generating the report including integration with the engineering bomb to the manufacturing so everything is maximum extent automated so that you are the product uh, launches uh, uh, faster time to market is achieved so these are all the few uh, trends and also the experience and benefits we uh, see from our experience with uh, working with the multiple customers across vertical that's a few pointers from my side Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gautman. So having defined what is engineering cloud, let's look at some of the trends and let's talk to our ISV friends. So how are you looking at engineering cloud? What are your focus areas? Which technologies are you working on? And how do you see the role of the accelerators, solutions, reference architectures from service providers and other firms? So we can start with Bhava, then Asif, and then Nitin. Yeah. Thanks, Pratik. So I'm Bhava Dikshit from ANSYS. And we develop multiple solution uh, simulation software for product design, testing, and operation. Uh, I support our customers in adopting high performance computing and primarily focus in India, ASEAN, uh, Australia, New Zealand region. So, how ISV is looking for engineering cloud uh, and what are focus areas? So, for us, mainly the focus areas uh, are scalability, security, ease of access, and the cost for customers. So we have seen that uh, customers, uh, engineers are mainly focused on reducing the time to develop the uh, product, complete the product design cycle in lesser time, uh, producing reliable and innovative products, but they are limited with the budget and the infrastructure. So engineering simulations, uh, that is facing the challenge of limited resources with the workstations and HPC clusters. So cloud computing is uh, giving a bigger platform there. With the uh, cloud computing, we are leveraging the high performance computing power as and when it is required. With data centers across the globe, uh, designing teams can easy, easily uh, collaborate and uh, uh, engineers can simulate complex design without sacrificing the accuracy and their project timelines. 
as well as cloud is providing a large platform to integrate A to Z tools, which are used in product development process. And with the right cloud computing solutions, even small businesses, startups, they can afford high performance computing to increase the productivity and innovations. Uh, accelerators are helping a lot uh, for customers who are using in-house infrastructure and then uh, planning to move to cloud for their product design process. And uh, pre-built solutions are helping them. Uh, they can easily utilize it. They can, uh, it is easy to adopt. And these are the few things. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Eva. So, Asif. Asif. Good morning, again. Um, I'm Adidu. Yeah, thank you. Good morning, everyone. This is Asif. I'm from PPC, Paramount Technology Corporation. I'm principal solution consultant, having 20 year plus domain experience and predominantly working with many, many customers across uh, India who are into different verticals and supporting them in solutioning, uh, architecting the enterprise solutions and adoption across the uh, organizations. So uh, our view of um, uh, looking at the market and how the uh, trend is happening in the, especially in the industries and in the, in the engineering domain is uh, we have seen like most of the companies are started looking for cloud enabled solution or cloud native solution. Now, this demand earlier was very limited. Uh, having uh, said that, we are talking about the engineering uh, cloud and uh, we know like most of the organizational company, most scared location is engineering department where they want to protect their data. They don't want to give access to many of the, uh, even like within the organization, they don't allow access to the other um, departments. So uh, from that point standpoint of view, many organizations are moving towards a cloud um, kind of a strategy is really uh, appreciative and we have seen like most of our new engagements are mostly asking for cloud native solution itself and existing customer are also in the process of moving their existing uh, solutions to the cloud so we see a great potential in this one and we are heavily uh, working on this direction uh, we are not uh, the customers are not only looking at a cloud enabled solution which means like you can deploy a solution to cloud but still you need to ma maintain and manage all your infra you have to upgrade, update those solutions in the system, but they're looking for a SaaS solution, which is software as a service solution on the cloud. That enables them a faster adoption, a quick start, and mostly they're looking for a pre built kind of a solution, uh, which doesn't require a lot of customization. So earlier, just give you perspective, I'm coming from a PLM domain, and we have seen like most organizations take the PLM from the, let's say, OEM like PTC, and then they go and customize the solution to a great extent uh, on the premises. And all uh, organizations have different customizations done on top of it. And they spend a lot of money on doing that. And then again, after that, upgrade and update is a big pain and big cost to the organization. And it's a, uh, I will say, three year or four year occurring kind of phenomenon. So, what uh, the cloud is bringing to the table is uh, seamless uh, upgrade and update by the uh, provider themselves. The customers only have to focus on their own role, like designing the things, maintaining the data, complete managing the NPD in the system. And cloud is also uh, removing the barriers between different departments. As I said earlier, like many of the organizations are only um, addressing the engineering department uh, was having all the data and even the manufacturing and the service organization of same department, same company was not having access to the complete data. So with cloud interaction, what is happening is this uh, silos of information is getting available to all the uh, stakeholders, key stakeholders in product development and the data is made available. We are seeing like the engineering is getting benefit out of it. The manufacturing is getting benefit out of it because of the seamless integration with the uh, system. Also the service side of the business is also getting benefit out of it. Uh, PTC has been developing a lot of solutions. We have already cloud enabled solution. Uh, like I will just give you an example. Like we have a vegan manufacturer in India itself who is having uh, geographically distributed teams across the globe and they are completely on the um, uh, cloud enabled solution. But that time it was the uh, requirement from their side, but of late we have seen the pandemic and some of the, uh, I will say, events like uh, attacks of virus on the systems and non-security of the on-prem uh, infrastructure. Many companies are looking at the cloud solution and they're moving towards that. And that has accelerated overall adoption of the cloud in the department and organization. And there is an immense uh, value also which the cloud enabled solution brings with the uh, uh, availability of AI and uh, other 
quick integration available with other solutions over the cloud, uh, which is very difficult to be created and maintained inside the on premises system. This has become a very, uh, I will say, uh, a key requirement of most of the organizations when they're looking at the uh, overall any system selection or any solution they want to go for it. PTC have been developing most of the solution on this one. We have already cloud native solution, like think of a CAT software which is running in a browser. So many of the organizations doesn't need to even buy systems or big system to start the CAT design. They can start with the browser and they can start working on it. They can use a mobile or tab and they can start designing it. So PTC is already having solutions and we are really focusing on uh, cloud native applications, which is immensely, uh, I will say, in demand in the engineering uh, organization. Thank you. Thank you, Asif. Nitin? Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Nitin Patel. I'm from Microsoft. I lead the Azure uh, business for the country. Standpoint, we are seeing a change happen and it's more so in the uh, post-COVID era. Uh, a, while there was a push for uh, visualization or real-time view of the business, uh, engineering business that's executed on the, on the ground, uh, the product performance. Uh, what's equally important is uh, the term anywhere, right? Uh, the flexibility to enable users to collaborate, work, contribute, irrespective of the situation, whether they are in office, they are for whatever reason working from home or traveling out, all of that uh, it should not stop the business from Head, right so that's the that's the push that's coming across board every uh, industry every second at making their employees uh, independent of what happens on the ground so that's really driving a lot of change across board it is driving a lot of organizations to have a real-time view of uh, or real-time contribution to design changes that they're doing design changes in the gas pipelines exploration design changes in the manufacturing all of that is happening as we go uh, 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 and uh, to add to that, the digital twin that we all spoke, talked about earlier, that's also coming strongly to help that motion. So if a plant office, he could see uh, live how the production is happening uh, uh, through the technology that we are enabling them. So that's the other trend that we The other is around how do we get faster products off the shelf into the marketplace and making sure we kind of innovate on, as we go along. Uh, we saw a very interesting use case come in in this period. Uh, I'll quote one uh, automobile had our service uh, uh, chain. And uh, when the vehicle enters into the service station, they took photographs of the vehicle on all sides and give an instant quote back to the customer that you know it's going to cost you, say, 2000 rupees to fix the dent on the corner, right? Customer takes it. It's great on both sides. Uh, customer sees the value coming strong across to him. Uh, the, the company earns additional revenue that you could make from the idle uh, resources, right? So that case is coming in all directions. So inferencing uh, is coming, visualization use case is coming, reaching, uh, building rich analytics. Uh, thing that cloud brings to the fore is multiple data sources at the click of a button, right? So on one side you have, on other side you have data that. Uh, how the product is performing, what are the tests it is going through, how do we use all of that together, build analytics into it, build AI models into it, make it more richer for the end uh, user to uh, uh, to use the service. So that's really the transformation that's happening across board. And we think across the globe, including India, all of the use cases going up strongly. So that's the view we have from a, a Microsoft standpoint. Thank you, Nathan. So let's move to enterprise. So how do enterprises are looking at engineering cloud? What are their focus areas? So we can start with Mahesh, then Karthik and Bala. Sure, Pratik. So thank you, everyone. Uh, good morning. Uh, so I, I am, I am uh, managing one of the CAD engineering group in the Intel organization. And we would like to leverage cloud engineering to ensure that we bring our designs uh, earlier to the market and with a better quality. So I would like to explain uh, overall our approach in two, three segments that what prob because of what problems we are trying to do that and what is the motivation we have, what approach uh, we are following and what challenges we see, right? And uh, like Vaibhav explained very well the constraint about the HPC 
and the constraint of the engineering for any design activity. So today we are limited with respect to the compute. So I would like to explain why do we see the limitations. So take any design activity which goes six months to nine months before tape in, and this design activity has uh, enough actions happens in those in six to nine months. In that actual design or the development happens between three to four months time. And during the development as every designer, we want to run our development and we want to ensure that our actions are happening properly. That is the simulations are working properly and our tests are going good and our regressions are executing good. And each regression iteration today takes two to three weeks time because of 10,000 or more test cases which runs and the average execution time of one test case is around two days. And if I even if I take the maximum available HPC resources, the overall time it requires is two to three weeks. And having two to three weeks of one iteration of execution in three months, I will get maybe six or seven iterations. That is not enough for me to ensure that quality is good. And that is not enough for me to get enough time to make the fixes of the issues I have seen and deliver. This is the every designer constraint today across the semiconductor industry. On top of that, we have the limitations from the HPC or from the uh, on-prime infrastructure where they need to upgrade their setup time to time so that they ensure the safety of our data. And whenever they upgrade, we also have to upgrade from the design perspective and there will be some downtime for the design. And that will be very costlier if I am do doing the design activity. And next, next problem statement is that because of this infrastructure constraint, if we need to move from one side to another side, like Intel, there are many organizations where they work across geo and they have a facility to move from one side to another side. And when they are moving, it should not be constrained that I can do design activity after two weeks and I'm not able to do the design from the day one. And these kind of constraints really impact for the design activities. And to solve all these problems, we would like to leverage cloud engineering. What does that mean? We would like to explore opportunities to execute our execution to the infinite compute in the cloud environment. And this cloud environment can be native or on-prime, or this can be external cloud. And today, how are we doing at Intel? that all the design activities, maybe a front end or back end, we are doing in two different steps or folds. First fold is where we see a maximum compute intense and where we see the execution time is higher. Because of the scalability, we want to ensure to use cloud computing uh, as a burst need. And whenever there is a need, I want to use on demand as many compute as possible or as many parallel executions I can make it. With that, I able to reduce my turnaround time up to 5x. That means the regressions which used to take two and a half weeks are able to execute in two and a half days. And this is the biggest improvement or the game changer in the quality improvement. If I able to execute in two and a half days, I get three or four times more regression executions in a given design uh, cycle. And second thing, when I am moving from one environment to the another site or another site environment, because of containerizing, because of bringing all the dependencies together, I able to enable the execution in a different site in a shorter span of time and doesn't need to wait for two weeks. And because of the container facility, I able to put all the infrastructure dependencies like operating systems and uh, any safety associated stuff in a container. I don't need to have a downtime whenever IT asks me to do that. And these are the solutions which we are approaching and we are solving to get to the benefit of the cloud engineering. The, 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 the major challenges what we see today are the design volumes. We, we talk about a volume of one terabyte to execute a data or to execute one test. And I cannot containerize one terabyte data. I can containerize only whatever the container facility gives me. And with this approach, I need to have a way to differentiate what I can containerize and what I cannot containerize. And that needs a profiling. And that profiling is also time expensive. That is not easier to solve. So what we are doing today is we are doing a different approach of understanding all the dependencies at one shot and then synchronizing the data for every new execution and then containerizing whatever the dependencies are required. 
so this approach though having a better turnaround time but still it is not efficient so we are looking for engineering for cloud as abhishek mentioned that is the infrastructure for the cloud uh, improvement are required so that we want to ensure whatever we want to do in a shorter span of time we able to do that so i would like to mention over here the uh, service organizations are bringing a lot of good out a lot of good innovative products but still there is a lot of improvements required in the future so that semiconductor companies like us able to execute their design in a short span of time thank you thank you mahesh kartik thank you mahesh and i think uh, i would like also to thank um, nascom and all the esteemed panelists to bring in a lot of valuable inputs so with that uh, good morning my name is um, kartik i had the r and d uh, for one of the business areas called smart mobility within continental automotive india private limited uh, this business area smart mobility we focus on um, businesses involving a lot of mobility services connected vehicles fleet operators commercial vehicle manufacturers oems and passenger vehicles and i would like to also add on a lot of this definition for this uh, cloud engineering engineering cloud uh, according to me i think a very short this thing engineering cloud is also one of those ways to design systems to leverage the power of power of the cloud to solve business problems so because all of these organizations are moving to cloud and as of now it is not nearly a buzzword but a, uh, these are become mandatory for any organizations wanting to succeed and expand in the future um, driven by data driven insights if you look at the amount of data that is uh, available from so many different uh, sources and what i would like to add is how we leverage cloud from an automotive perspective or an automotive domain um, and i think nitin uh, um, also talked about one particular use case uh, which i also wanted to talk about because we have a product exactly doing the same so we we have i think so many um, uh, iot devices within a passenger car uh, and primarily i think we are looking at connected connected vehicles right so with all of those data when you bring in a car to a car service workstation exactly what like uh, nitin mentioned um, so we can gather all of those uh, data from all the uh, uh, these things within the automobile and then find out as to which parts are having more wear and tear how do we do predictive maintenance um so these are all i think the new age kind of workstations in order to improve a big customer experience um so we have solutions within uh, the automotive domain that we are leveraging the cloud for connected vehicles both for not only passenger cars but also for trucks there is a lot of data if you look at the european region for example there is a lot of legislation and laws um that we have to add on uh, to ensure that i think we follow all the compliance rules and earlier it was a nightmare for all these fleet operators to even manage that um so right now we we have uh, uh, a device which is also made by continental which is capable of sharing a lot of data depending on driver behavior and based on that i think we access uh, we process a lot of these information on the cloud and give the fleet operators a very unique way of saying that where my trucks are what are those uh, infringements that the drivers are making and, and these are all i think products that are being heavily used and i think they are um uh, increasing the productivity and also giving me an um, transparency of where my uh, fleet are uh, and it is with all of this it is becomes very imperative to seamlessly connect the drive and the vehicle's infrastructure all of us are moving towards autonomous mobility and we are also um, at, from continental especially smart mobility we are having a lot of i think uh, applications where we support this autonomous mobility which is the future of how the mobility is growing and behind the scenes for all of this i think software is a service i also heard some of the panelists also talk about software as a service that is going to be the key driver behind all of this transformation uh, and cloud engineering using cloud engineering i think it is helping us from moving from product centric approach which was the way all all these i think from an automotive domain we were focusing on a lot of product centric approaches to more and more customer centric solutions where we are able to tie a lot of information together um and also i think uh, nitin also covered one of those use cases where we are having so much of um, data and we are having so much of software inside the car so you can imagine one scenario where there is a lot of third party data aggregators which obviously continental is also working with uh, who collect a lot of um, data from the cars especially these high end cars bmws um, audis and others and these data aggregators are selling the data regarding what is happening how the driver is driving and you can also imagine a scenario where all of these data comes together 
uh, gets processed on the cloud using HPC's high performance computing that also one of those panelists talked about. And we are able to roll out a lot of uh, use cases um, uh, where I think we can talk about predictive maintenance, life cycles, um, even first time fix rights. Um, uh, and all of that go to improving the overall customer um, centric approach that I was also talking about. Obviously, this journey is uh, a lot more challenging. It is, it is not the way I think uh, we have been all been used to. It is a, a big shift and change. And it, it starts off in big steps. So for an automotive domain as to how we move into the cloud, we started off with small uh, build related activities where we move to the cloud, where we can use a lot of these resources available on the cloud and generate either Docker containers, which one of those other uh, uh, panelists were also talking about, and even Java archives. Then we slowly move into microservice based architecture, which is now paved the way for easier development across even um, locations and globes. So different teams across the globes, they can work on individual microservices and those microservices can be orchestrated using Kubernetes um, uh, as well as I think uh, both on AWS as well as the Google Cloud as a platform. Um, and I think can be uh, uh, then shown to the customer as one product. Um, so customer does not even know that I think the, behind the scenes there are multiple microservices, multiple teams, and these microservices, the beauty of microservices, these microservices can be developed using multiple languages. One microservice, for example, can be used using Java, one microservice can be used using Python or Node.js, and all of them just beautifully come together using Kubernetes as an orchestration technology and is given as an end product to um, customer. And obviously we don't end with that. Uh, so once the applications are moved to production, we also have to look at operationalization of these pro products so that for our customer, the service avail availability and the SLAs are tracked. I, th I think we at Continental are looking at 99.95% service availability. And for that, I think we have a backend operations team um, who are monitoring using a lot of these dashboards from Datadog or even uh, Elk Stack, ELK Stack, or even uh, Grafana and Kibana. And at the same time, we also need to ensure that cybersecurity is part of this development process. And we need to have a security operation center. Um, so for example, all of you must be aware of this um, log4j vulnerability, which was found in um, um, uh, December. So moving to the cloud has its own challenges, but at the same time, we have to be prepared across all of these different areas, right from development, integrating security as part of development. And then finally, when we go to production, trying to look at operations and ensure that the customer finally has a very smooth um, experience. And the outcome of it is obviously a lot of these uh, team members obviously want to get upskilled. Cloud is obviously the buzz, buzzword in the market. And upskilling of people is also very necessary, uh, which is achieved by, I think, uh, we have a lot of collaboration with these different cloud platforms. Uh, and I think organizations have to look at upskilling all of these people so that we are ready for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Bala? Thanks, Farik. Uh, uh, yeah, so I am. My name is Bala. Before I start, yeah, I'll, I'll forget the introduction. So my name is Bala. I work uh, in the product management team in Siemens Celtinius. Um, so I've been uh, in uh, Siemens for around ten years. So I have, uh, you know, the typical angiography systems, which are huge hardware. Around eight years, I worked there and moved to a completely SaaS-based product, which helps radiologists. Uh, detect uh, you know lesions from mri images or uh, ct images so right now that's the product which i'm working on. so i can see both sides of uh, the thing right especially with the enterprises uh, you know, ch changes uh, to be honest change is not easy change is hard especially with the enterprise right so we have a huge set of uh, hardware software uh, uh, you know uh, being developed and cloud uh, you know enters in and we see the potential advantages of cloud and overnight uh, you cannot uh, you know, completely transform right so so this change is hard and uh, you know as uh, in the power of atomic habits james clear says right like uh, you have to make it smaller right so that's how i think most of the enterprises evolve also so having uh, said that you know the advantages and uh, the great merits of cloud uh, the especially in an enterprise uh, place where there are huge mri systems the hardwares and softwares uh, how do you make this change happen is itself a, a huge uh, thing. So, so where uh, Siemens is uh, currently focusing is uh, you know, focusing on completely a software product like a, a radiology uh, product, right? Where can we do it? Uh, you know, it all comes down from the customer uh, uh, aspect, right? Like the change within the organization also, where uh, 
if the, if the customers are purely working on a software model, can we make it into a SaaS uh, product where, where we can uh, deploy the software and uh, you know, the radiologists get the software change immediately? So those are the products which, you know, which, which we are uh, looking at and uh, trying to make small changes at a time. Having said that, uh, you know, the change at the engineering side, right? Like, uh, of course, we have all the, con the continuous integration right from the requirements management till the you know, test documentation as well as uh, you know, the, the supply chain. It's all in uh, you know, the SaaS, the cloud model. Uh, but uh, in terms of the mindset change, right, I just wanted to bring that aspect as well. So finally, when the product is being sold, right? We, are, we, are, we, you know, we, are we ready for selling a SaaS product when you're, you're used to sell the conventional uh, you know, boxes as well as uh, uh, you know, conventional hardware products? So how, how are you making uh, revenue, right? Is it a uh, subscription or a tiring? Something which is new to the sales and marketing folks. So even there, the, the, there's a challenge in you know, convincing. It's not just in the engineering side alone. When you are changing the whole business model, the, the change has to percolate uh, uh, throughout. But of course, uh, seeing the advantage of cloud, right? Where, uh, you know, right from the, from the developer till the radiologist when he's in, uh, having the shortest turnaround time where the requirement is being met uh, quickly. So uh, the, the seeing the potential advantages, we have to work around in making uh, awareness across the businesses, uh, including marketing sales and as well as uh, hardware as well. So that being said, yes, um, there are businesses which are still in uh, not in cloud, but uh, over time, we'll have to kind of uh, segregate which can uh, add value and which are purely in uh, cloud business. So, so this is uh, unlike the independent software vendors, right, where you had the earlier section. The enterprises is a is a bit uh, messier, uh, you know, in terms of uh, transformation. But but yeah, it'll uh, once it picks up, uh, you know, that that's a adoption curve, right? Where the the even within an organization, there are teams which which look so like a startup, and then they spread off word, and then it, it kind of uh, expands across the uh, company. So that's where we're all uh, working towards. So that being said, yeah, we're not uh, without challenges. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Bala. So I think we have seen the cases from semiconductor industry to automotive industry and healthcare. So which all other industries we are seeing the use cases? Maybe I can, Nitin, since you work with so many this industries in Microsoft, so if you can tell us more about use case emerging in other industries, that will be helpful to all. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so uh, that we see are, uh, so yeah, as you know, IT, uh, been always horizontal HR systems, your payroll system, they are pretty much standard. On top of you, the uh, the stacks that are relevant for days to come, we're seeing a lot of push towards uh, what will super app, right? Uh, each organization has its own set of applications, possibly multiple applications serving the same customer, right? So if you are uh, uh, if you are in the pre-sale cycle, you are uh, addressing a set of, uh, uh, applications to your customers while you are delivering the product to the customer or another set of applications. And when you serve as a customer, the support desk and all of that, how do you make sure it's an integrated view to the customer? How do you make sure the experience of the customer is connected right from the day he, we kind of approach them to the time we uh, probably come to the end of the life cycle of the customer. So the whole cycle is something that is being serviced together as one uniform way. And moreover, uh, uh, in the, uh, if, the look, if we look at the way India is structured, a lot of companies are, uh, are groups of serving the same set of customers. So for example, institution which serves as a bank, as a loan or a securities or a mutual fund, and how do they integrate all this offer? Likewise, in the, uh, in the engineering space also, we have uh, companies which are in the steel business, in the automobile business, and so on and so forth. So all of this coming together is something that we're seeing very strongly come across board. Uh, take the step uh, one step further. You have the value chain, right? You have the uh, the, the entity is serving in the customer. There are partners, uh, PTC and ANSYS who are serving uh, probably a set of customers through a through a uh, and uh, how do we bring the value chain up there? Make it an integrated platform that kind of integrates not just with the point solution that is being offered to the customer, but also the uh, as we like to the surround which would cover uh, things like security, things like how do you build DevOps engine into it? How do you build uh, into say uh, a Teams platform for uh, collaboration and so on and so forth, making it much more richer for the customer to adopt uh, technologies. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you, Nidhi. So let's come back to service providers. So if we take a, like a life cycle view of design, manufacturing, and after sales, so where are you seeing the most action, which applications have migrated, which are yet to migrate? And similarly, from if you take industry view, we already did discuss a few industry use cases, but from your perspective, which industries are at forefront of adopting cloud and which are the laggard? So maybe you can start with Kunal and then Sujoy. Yeah, sure. Thanks, uh, Kunal Vipro. Um, I had uh, the cloud ecosystem for engineering, and we believe that it is not just one aspect of engineering. So it's both software development as well as you know using it um, uh, across industry 4.0 and manufacturing and all that stuff. So, you know, broadly speaking, I'd say that um, you know, obviously, the things which are closer to enterprise, um, like for example, PLM, you know, um, are moving. Uh, I think the things which are closer to manufacturing, you know, the, we talked about um, MOM, we talked about um, MES, they are moving next. I think the one which is the furthest away um, is engineering IT uh, or R&D IT, right? Which is really uh, supporting CAD on cloud uh, or EDA on cloud. Um, um, in fact, even software on cloud. And I think it was very interesting to, to hear from Karthik when he's talk, talking about building software on cloud using cloud, right? So that itself, is a, is a paradigm in its own self. Um, so I think um, the, the 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 crux of it is you know when we when we are able to get you know the the R and D IT on cloud I think that will that will be the panacea that will be the end goal of uh, getting you know CAD and and those kinds of workloads running. I think we are making progress simulation. We see I mean, answers represented here that they're doing a bang up job on trying to get simulation there. Um, I think uh, CAD just because of uh, you know and even EDA uh, we heard from Intel. Um, just the the volume of data is so high that it's not seamlessly movable across uh, you know uh, across data centers or in the cloud itself. Hosting is is is, is problematic. Um, I think there are multiple solutions. If you look at what how people are addressing it, and it's very interesting to see the way Siemens is addressing it, or Ansys is addressing it, or PTC is addressing it, or even Dassault is addressing it. Is is kind of to see whether you know you have object only view or if you have a file only view. You know, and and that 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 I think is the main conundrum. Which kind of stops us from going to complete full hog engineering. I mean R and D on uh, on cloud. I think you know solutions like PTCs, um, you know on shape, uh, they are getting there. But then again, those are SMB kind. In my opinion, they're SMB kind of solutions. They do not really address the large manufacturing houses, you know, in automotive and in aerospace, um, because just that it's just a complex uh, ecosystem of assembly um, and components. Which probably cannot get managed as easily. Similarly, I believe the uh, the CAD heavy PLM is is another problem uh, area. You know, you can have the enterprise uh, PLM uh, which can move, but the cloud heavy PLM, you know, and that's really where I think Siemens and BTC um, and Dassault have different points of view on how they want to do that. Um, but from a so that's that's really my, my point of view on how it is moving, what is moving, and what is not moved. From a from a from a market perspective, I think um, obviously um, um, we see manufacturing, and you know that's just the big kahuna. But we are seeing successes, in, 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 and we we talk about life sciences, right? A, a lot of HPC workloads um, are now gaining uh, support with the ability to burst or the ability to have GPU as a service, um, or or some of those uh, capabilities which now the cloud platform providers are able to. Uh, to provide to uh, to customers so therefore you know chemistry pharmacology uh, those kind of use cases uh, genetics um, are, are 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 becoming prevalent compute heavy memory heavy uh, you know uh, storage still not so heavy um, we also see uh, you know um, oil and gas for example uh, you know we have a large program on OSDU um, you know sub, uh, subsurface discovery where we are leveraging a lot of cloud and AI capabilities, I think that that combination um, is, is great. Um, I think newer use cases around simulation uh, will, will help, you know, some of the other industries move. Um, for example, um, you know, on high tech, on semiconductor, we, we see a tremendous movement in terms of uh, EDA um, and the ability to use both captive capacity as well as burst or complete cloud. I think the, 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 the uh, you know, there are ways, the, I think the crux of engineering IT and R&D IT is variable workloads. Um, unlike enterprise IT, where you have more or less constant workload once you've deployed a solution, engineering workloads based on the life cycle 
um, uh, even within design itself will vary. And therefore we need the ability to be able to optimize the workload, the ebb and flow of the workload, because otherwise you're not, you know, you're spending too much. You know, you turn on the tap, but you don't turn on the tap too much. You know, you're wasting a lot of water, right? So you lose a lot of compute capacity. So again, for example, for us, we are working on those kind of solutions to help optimize the, the consumption of cloud. Uh, you know, our NOAA solution kind of does that. So I think those things will help, you know, some of the other industries get there. So we see uh, semiconductor folks will uh, will pick this up on the compute side, and we see simulation folks, you know, on mechanical side, not just uh, you know uh, CAE kind of simulation, but other simulation. For example, automotive guys with their hill cell mill kind of simulation. Again, these are uh, you know variable workloads. Uh, they'll start picking up, um, and um, and I think there will be a combination, in my opinion, of on-prem cloud versus and uh, you know uh, uh, hyperscaler cloud. Uh, which will kind of determine. So I think the solution is going to be somewhere in between uh, on, on as we work, move, I think, uh, closer to the design workloads uh, and away from the manufacturing IT and engineering IT and, and uh, enterprise IT workloads. Okay. Thank you, Kunal. Sanjay? Yeah, uh, thanks. Hi, this is Sanjay Ghosh. I'm presenting uh, cloud and data engineering uh, for engineering services at HCL. Um, I, I think, you know, Kunal gave a very interesting perspective. Uh, you know, we are seeing if, you know, similar uh, trends, uh, I'll cover a little bit in terms of what we are seeing from a market movement perspective, right? Given that, you know, engineering services is a large part of what uh, HCL technologies does. Uh, you know, we've seen that the small and medium uh, businesses are adopting the cloud much faster than uh, you know, traditional uh, big uh, manufacturers or uh, asset heavy industries, you know, similar to what um, Kunal talked about. Uh, but one trend that we are seeing is, is large industries are also spinning off small startup kind uh, companies, such as an aero spinning off a drone uh, company, right? Which is almost, if you would, uh, born digital who are going native to the cloud. So the one trend that we are seeing is in the SMB and in spin-offs, uh, starting cloud versus starting on-prem. So that is one big trend, right? Uh, from an industry perspective, you know, we've seen CPG retail also adopting much faster. Um, uh, in the aero and auto, I would say that those are la uh, laggards, but, the electronic, uh, the EVs in autos, for example, or the UAVs, I think they are much faster in adopting uh, the cloud. Uh, MedTech is an area, not only from, uh, you know, research and uh, AI, but also uh, use cases where, you know, you can run a franchisee model, but have a central way to detect uh, challenges. You know, some of the uh, co-panelists here, uh, are also customers for HCL where we are doing actually work in uh, uh, in this uh, area. Uh, you know, it's it's also encouraging to see the pharma uh, adopting it. Uh, what we have seen is that it's little uh, laggard. One thing that I wanted to add, you know, a lot of panelists talked about the ability for engineering cloud to be leveraged for burst uh, compute. I think one important thing that the cloud brings in is the ability to do analytics in data science at the same place where you're doing your engineering. That gives an edge and almost not a secret sauce anymore, but a lot of companies are using that as a secret sauce, not only to optimize their cost, but get, gain insights. I'll give you two examples, right? One is a semiconductor validation company, right? When they would ship out or create huge machines, they would pack the max CPUs, max GPUs uh, inside their boxes, right? Now we are actually doing a project which lets them optimize that. Uh, you know, somebody talked about variable workloads, right? One thing that we are also seeing as a trend over the last three years in the engineering world is seasonality based on calendar events. You know, as an example, you know, Apple will come up with an iPhone in August, September. So starting January, you will see all the uh, semi-manufacturing companies going buzzer because they'll have a huge load coming from Foxconn to say that validate the chip or Samsung has to go live. So there is also this seasonality, right? In the retail, you had this 
Christmas thing. It's almost Christmas for uh, you know the high tech world, right? So how do you burst out, right? And also use uh, data. So I think that's where uh, you know uh, that's where how cloud is interesting. Uh, Parekh, you also broke it broke it down to design, manufacture, after sales. Uh, uh, you know, in the last just two years, you know, we have done about twelve to fifteen. Uh, transformation of using engineering cloud for companies across the sectors that I talked about. Uh, intuitively, I thought that the aftermarket is the most easiest to move, right? Because it's, you know, like somebody mentioned, most detached from the entire life cycle. Uh, but, you know, that's where I think the intuition stops. What we have seen is the design moving max. And I think Kunal talked about it as well. And now the MES and the manufacturing uh, systems uh, are adopting, uh, you know, the, the cloud. So that's where we are seeing is that the leftmost has moved or in the process. And next we believe is the manufacturing and then uh, the after sales. I think the detached after sales, uh, where there are dealer systems, scheduling systems, you know, IoT systems to optimize or use AR, VR. I think those are still independent systems, which can be, born digital or born cloud uh, but the traditional integrated systems is left first and uh, so on and so forth uh, within hcl like i said you know one of the things that we have done is uh, created a one plm solution which actually helps the customers move to this journey you know it's a very great way that you ran this from giving the isv and the enterprises uh, perspective i think where the si's come in is you know, you have PTC system, the saw systems, uh, Siemens systems that a lot of these companies are using. I think what the SIs do is make sure that all of the system and ICs work together. You know, everybody has a point of view in terms of how they should do it. And I think SIs make all of this work to get the business outcomes uh, delivered uh, to the customer. So that's, you know, how we uh, at HCL see this uh, space evolving product. Okay, thank you, Sanjay. So, so far we have discussed the definition, the benefits and so many use cases across enterprise, ISVs, industries. So now let's come to the challenges. So what are the challenges when moving, migrating loads to cloud, the deployment and adoption in the enterprises and how you can mitigate them? So maybe you can start with Salman and then Dhiman. Thanks. Uh, hi all. Uh, good morning. And I would like to start thanking uh, by thanking NASCOM for organizing this round table aptly on engineering cloud and the other panelists for pitching in with their views. So a uh, quick introduction about myself. So I am Salman uh, and I lead the uh, IoT and AI practice uh, and uh, at LTTS we do primarily services on engineering and R&D and as part of my experience I've been involved in various digital transformation and uh, 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 in various domains like medical discrete and process manufacturing. Uh, so with regards to the adoption and the migration of these tools, uh, what we believe are internally have classified uh, engineering as these three segments, what we call as engineering technology and tools like model, simulation tools, et cetera, product configurators are part of this particular area. Uh, then we have the other segment called as operational technology and we treat MES uh, uh, and the likes in this particular area. And then we have the aftermarket. Uh, so these are pr primarily the three areas which we cater to. And uh, what we have observed is that uh, uh, who takes the call in terms of adopting the engineering cloud. Uh, traditionally, what we saw is uh, the individual businesses uh, were basically adopting the engineering cloud either for better productivity and efficiencies. These were seen in areas of uh, serviceability, etc. And then in recent times, we all have seen that the CT organizations are trying to streamline all these individual efforts which are happening in the organization and adopt approaches like platform to streamline the effort. And now we see a small, uh, strong adoption or co-work between the CIO and the CTO office. Uh, comparatively, we see a higher resistance in adopting the engineering cloud in the OT space uh, compared to the other spaces of uh, engineering technology as well as aftermarket. Uh, from a technical adoption perspective, uh, still we believe uh, the top concerns are with regards to data security and data privacy. Uh, uh, data security is important uh, and uh, because they believe uh, most of the applications on the OT space uh, could be uh, vulnerable to the increased attack surface vector. And uh, from a data uh, privacy perspective, since the data is now on the public cloud, uh, they are worried about the data sensitivity. So one of the example uh, I could quote is uh, one of the interactions which we had with a major auto OEM in US. 
uh, where uh, they shared the concern that if the vehicle quality information was exposed, uh, they would start getting uh, inquiries from various customers asking about discounts uh, because it could be a first time quality check or a second time quality check, quality check when the product was out. And this is that we would see a lot of, a lot of business risk uh, 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 getting involved. Uh, the other important aspect or other hindrance what we see is uh, some of these engineering tools are legacy and they don't adopt well from the licensing model and mechanism to adopt the cloud movement. And that's what basically restricts them to take the existing tool which they have been using for years and move that to the uh, cloud footprint. Uh, also in terms of adoption in the OT space, we see a strong resistance coming from the shop floor. Uh, and uh, that could be due to the higher transparency which is involved. Uh, so if I can take an example, uh, in one of the engagements which we work very closely with an oil and gas uh, segment, uh, they were basically having resistance to have the uh, gateways or the edge devices uh, adopted into the plant because that would basically expose certain inactions. And that is a, sh a shop floor adoption which we see in terms of uh, uh, resistance uh, aspect. Uh, other points with regards to technical is the interoperability and the integration issues. Uh, so though we move one system, we see that there are other systems which it has to closely inter interface and integrate with, and that would pose a lot of networking challenge and network design related aspects. So that is another key area. And uh, another area which we see is the poor understanding in some of the cases with regards to their uh, internal IT expertise and capability. Uh, so here we see specifically the uh, lacuna in understanding the IA space and the software as a service model. Uh, uh, I can again cite an example. As we speak, we are basically battling a case uh, where we are trying to uh, uh, adopt a service as a, serv a software as a service model for one of our customers, but there is a resistance in IT because they would need to sp uh, spend time and effort to understand the current uh, software, harden it, and also train their existing people to support it. So that, that's another area where we see from a technical perspective, the migrations are getting uh, uh, affected. Uh, another last important point is with regards to the cost management. Uh, and I believe that though the certain systems have moved to the cloud, uh, the cost management has not been proper and the businesses are seeing a higher OPEX cost, which is also causing uh, certain migration related uh, resistance. So coming to the next point, uh, how do we mitigate or uh, how do we see these organizations mitigate certain uh, migration risk? So first to start with, I think is to uh, do the proper uh, uh, planning with regards to uh, how this migration has to be strategized as well as, a, as well as a roadmap. So for this, we believe that qualified consultants have to be basically included, involved earlier in the stage, uh, who would do the proper assessment in terms of the current application as is state, and as well as do the necessary TCO calculations and the necessary footprints, which is needed in terms of the security uh, vulnerability assessments. All of this has to be upfront planned and designed. The second important aspect is what we believe is to include all the key stakeholders uh, when it comes to adoption. Uh, what we sometimes see is there are certain business units which take independent individual uh, decisions and they don't necessarily get the right uh, uh, inclusion from the IT team or the other uh, key stakeholders. So it's always good and better to ensure that all the key relevant stakeholders are basically uh, uh, discussed, talked about, and their expectations are basically tracked. And approaches like the di digital thread, et cetera, are basically included to ensure that entire life cycle and the gamut of uh, key stakeholder management is, is, is addressed. Uh, another area which we believe is important is to ensure the IT and ops readiness. Uh, sometimes uh, 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 with the advent of cloud or the movement to cloud, uh, there could be certain existing processes which needs to be relooked at. Uh, so that has to be basically relooked. Investment into automation and observability is important. We heard the other panelists earlier in the call talk about this. When a system is moved to the cloud, it is very important to ensure that it is up and running and all the existing SLAs are basically addressed, uh, addressed to. And a better and good uh, observability mechanism basically helps mitigate that. And finally, we believe that uh, to ensure that the system is uh, widely adopted and successful, uh, the organization needs to invest in training. And this is most important because it's not just a technology shift or a system shift, uh, but it's also the changes in processes. And this could basically affect their current day-to-day -day working. So uh, having the training plan called out and ensuring the staff is basically trained uh, to basically adopt this new movement uh, is very key critical for uh, uh, the uh, migrated system to be successful and widely adopted. adopted. Thanks uh, with this, uh, I would like to request my colleague to put a point on this. Thank you, Devan. 
Hey, thanks, Parikh. Um, thanks, uh, thanks, everybody. I think it has been a very insightful uh, conversation. A lot of uh, very interesting facets of you know how you adopt cloud in this ERND space is coming out. Uh, just a quick introduction for myself. Uh, my name is Deman, I'm the Global CTO for Digital Engineering and Tech Mahindra, and taking care of the overall digital engineering initiative for the ERND space. Uh, so obviously, you know, uh, my esteemed co-panelist talks about, you know, what's essentially, uh, you know, this, this cloud adoption for the engineering cloud uh, is, right? It is actually more of an experience transformation than a technology transformation, right? And given that it's an experience transformation, right, it, it is a, it's more about the ecosystem and not about the single pieces that move to cloud. Because if you move single pieces to cloud, there are a lot of, uh, friction points that we actually generate, right? We all we are all talk about the hybrid world, but that's where the big challenge is, right? The, the moment we talk about the hybrid world, the challenges come in. So I think uh, we already spoke about some of the challenges and I'll probably add on the few things. Uh, so obviously data is uh, the biggest challenge, if you ask me. Now data has obviously various facets in terms of how it, uh, you know, it presents itself in the entire or migration or adoption journey. Now, my colleagues spoke about the, you know, the cloud burst and the seasonality and stuff like that. Uh, it's also a function of, when I talk about data, right, it's also a function of what kind of workload that we are moving to cloud, right? Whether it's a design workload or the fabrication or the simulation workload or, you know, whether we are talking about aftermarket. We, it is also a function of um, what kind of cloud journey we are looking at. Is it... Uh, a cloud native pass ecosystem that we are moving into or is it a saas product that which is getting customized right uh, it's a big function of that right probably with cloud native pass it's a little easier right uh, you know i'm not discounting the complexities here but with saas there is a big challenge but then with saas you have a, a much le better leverage in terms of the go to market especially you know kunal spoke about the cad and the eda area right and my friend in intel also spoke about the huge amount of volumes of data that is involved uh, in a in a simple simulation cycle right so data uh, management and data engineering overall is a a big big pain area or i would say an opportunity area also i think and one of the things which have been working in most of the customers and as we speak we are doing it for one of the major automobile ma uh, manufacturers as well as for one of the semi semi semicon manufacturers and that's where i see both the sides of the story coming in is where we really need to come out with a strategy of what we really want to move to cloud and that's very important right decide what's essentially if you we, we spoke about uh, i think uh, my friend in continental spoke about the or automotive industry so if you look at um, automotive if you look at semicon if you look at healthcare and if you look at the various life cycle stages that you are actually moving the workload to, the, the data problem becomes probably a little more simpler, right? We need to decide that what data needs to reside on the edge, what data really needs to move to fog, and what data really moves to cloud, right? It's not just about cost, but it is also about the latency requirements, right? So your use cases will have very different latency requirements, very different response times, right? As opposed to, uh, you know, just, just the cost factor. Uh, while we do this, right, uh, one of the ch key other challenges, and I, my, my friend from LTT has already spoke about this, is the interoperability, right? Uh, you know, in any industry today, if you look at the R&D space, there is, there is not a single canonical that we can refer to. And that's where probably the IT side of the story is actually much more mature. But if you look at insurance, and insurance also has a typical, I mean, I'm just drawing a parallel, I might be outside the ambit of the conversation, but insurance also has a very uh, dense legacy jungle, right? When you move an insurance policy administration system, it actually requires, uh, you know, a, a very similar kind of challenges to be solved. So one of the things that we are doing is actually deriving an industry level canonicals. And again, those canonicals, uh, obviously uh, have variations across the life cycle of the function that you are, uh, you know, uh, moving to cloud to. For example, for design, you have a canonical. For fabrication, you have a canonical. For aftermarket, that we have a canonical. So that, you know, in a large, to a large extent, breaches the, uh, the interoperability issue. 
and with the with the ability to strategizing the the data management and data migration then the problem becomes a little more simpler to solve i'm not as i uh, as i said earlier i'm not underplaying the complexities here but i'm trying to uh, make the problem simpler so that we can chew and solve it and that's how we are doing it for some of the uh, very interesting programs that uh, we are we are going into right the other important challenge that i see is integration right so that's a big challenge right and again it's a function of what kind of workloads but if you really look at some of those i mean uh, some of our esteemed panelists uh, spoke about the plms around cloud cad obviously is is difficult but there are attempts being made to move cad and then mes and mom which obviously has got a very legacy backbone now in a typical cloud journey you will always have at a, at a point in time where some of the things are in cloud some of the things are in on prem right and that's where the integration becomes very complex it also becomes complex because the extent of legacy uh, that is actually there in the current incumbent real estate it's huge right so the difference between the 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 saas the saases of the world or the passes of the world and the difference in terms of what is on premise and which we really which is very difficult to move so the integration becomes a huge issue in terms of again interoperability comes in again you know we talk about microservices but you will see that when you actually enable a microservice and you actually have to have an mes system talk to microservice that's really a nightmare right so i think integration is a is a big challenge and i think we again you know are taking uh, the common bus approach where we call the erd bus we are actually creating an erd bus where it comes with a set of adapters and connectors to some of these uh, mayer accelerators uh, it is not downplaying the problem that we have but it is just making it smaller for us to solve right uh, but apart from uh, data and obviously security uh, you know my friend spoke about it so i'll not delve deeper but security uh, it's more of a mindset issue as opposed to a technology issue right uh, we have all we, we have got the technology enablers in place in terms of security but the regulatory aspects uh, the different uh, the safe harbors you know that restrict us the data movement from you know one boundary to the other makes cyber security more complex and also it becomes more complex because you are actually adding billions of devices into the system right so till now you know we are really aspiring to have something called a didam a device idam right what we do today is essentially map the devices as identities into typical idam systems but that's not how devices work right so we really need to have a synergy between what we call as a traditional it idam and an engineering idam and that's what probably would solve the problems of 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 security to a large extent and cyber security significantly but in my view uh, while these are these are these are problems which can be broken down simplified and we can take bits and pieces and you know try to have and that's where the sis uh, come in because you know we have the platforms we have the uh, you know the end users and that's where the sis come in to really solve the problem and make it happen for you but i think the biggest challenge if you ask me the biggest challenge is in the experience transformation space right uh, imagine the kind of experience today uh, a chief engineer in boeing has when he is actually designing an aircraft right he is actually looking into plm systems he is looking into the supply chain systems so there is no single mirror that he has today where he is actually completing the design or or his entire team for that matter right but when you talk about Uh, engineering cloud the nirvana is actually to have a collaborative and i'm just talking about the design workload right uh, as 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 an example i mean we can talk about the other workloads also but if you look at the design workload and if you really want to take a collaborative design platform to cloud and and that's where the efficiency is there is a huge amount of uh, experience gap that is there from what is there today to what is there tomorrow and that's where i think uh, and and it gets accentuated because today in the design process we are actually involving the customer right today in the design process we are actually involving the supplier which was not the case earlier right so essentially uh, there is um, uh, a view of the entire ecosystem that uh, you know the oems or the tar ones are having today which they were not having which is a very different uh, you know experience to really have but the struggle is to in terms of ways of working how really they adapt themselves to such kinds of ways of working and that's where a lot of metaverse use cases are also coming in which is essentially uh, bringing them up front right um, you know part of the design thinking workshops 
to simulate such kind of design experiences with them and then really establish the experience flow that you need to have for design. A very similar analogy or a parallel can be drawn uh, for the downstream um, use cases and also you know, for other industries like automotives and, and, and things like that. Yeah. Just to end, uh, what I wanted to say that uh, I think it is important to see these challenges as opportunity. There is a significant amount of, and the moment we bring in experience element, the productivity element, I think the problem becomes much simpler. And the approach would be also to take use case by use case and break the problems into small pieces and ensure that the experience element is actually addressed first as opposed to solving a technology problem. Thanks, Parikh. Thanks, Devan. I see Mahesh raising hand. Mahesh, you can go. Yeah, Parik. So I just wanted to bring one migration challenge. I will not take more than a minute. So the data organization is a key challenge for the migration. So today when I'm executing my design, I have a flexibility facility to keep all the data wherever I want. So there are data methodologies where I keep all the data in predefined location that covers 99% of my design data. And 1% data stays somewhere else because I have the access. And when I am migrating the execution from my uh, current setup to the cloud compute, if I miss that 1% data, then the whole execution fails. And that calls a need of data organization from the start of the execution. And the problem today is that we don't know what is that 1%, where that data stays. Having one terabyte data in that 1% is huge. It, it is really a challenge. So the mitigation over here is to really uh, be more organized and be more aware of the data, what you are dealing with. And that is the key for uh, such migration. Thank you. Okay, thanks Mahesh. So whatever we discussed so far will not be possible if we don't have the talent and internal collaboration in the organization. So the ne next question is like, how are your engineering cloud team organized in your organization? How do you collaborate internally? And what are the top skill requirements for engineering cloud? Maybe you can start with Prabhu and then with Indu. Uh, thanks, Parikh. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Prabhu Patrani, uh, heading the Digital Thread uh, Solutions Group in TCS, which is part of the IoT Digital Engineering Unit. And I'm responsible for digital thread growth and PLM growth. Um, so in TCS, um, what we follow is a two-layered uh, collaboration model with all the internal units. Um, the, the IoT and digital engineering unit itself has about four subunits, uh, which are intelligent products, connected plants, connected services, and digital threat. Um, the skill and scale on digital technologies is available with each of these units. And uh, there are also other supporting functions uh, within the unit. One such supporting function is the uh, platform services group. Uh, this group comes with expertise in, uh, in cloud computing, edge computing, high performance computing, AI, ML, uh, etc. And what they provide is they provide a common technology and platform enablement to all the units. So the first level of collaboration happens between the subunits, say for example, digital threat with the platform services group. Now, uh, if there is a need for um, hyperscaler requirements or if there is a need for new cloud technology expertise, uh, then the units, uh, the, the, the digital thread unit and the platform services together, they go and collaborate with the TCS level units for Azure, AWS or Google. So there is a constant uh, bi bi-directional communication that is happening between these units in terms of information and expertise flow. Now, um, there are various uh, other collaboration touch points to these layers. Uh, there are collaboration touch points with the infrastructure services group. There are collaboration touch points with the chief technology office, uh, with uh, alliances in particular, and, and of course, with other digital units which are also operating on the cloud. Uh, this way, this collaboration is helping us to put together a very, very competitive bundled package to customers. And uh, this is how the collaboration happens uh, within our groups. Now, from a skill and scale perspective, the approach what we have taken is to uh, upskill the, the solution leaders, the architects, the developers within each of these units uh, to acquire capabilities, uh, not just in cloud, but uh, in, in uh, say, for example, AIML or in other cognitive operations. Uh, 
So these people get externally certified at various levels, uh, be it at an architect level or be it at a developer level or infrastructure specialist. So these are the people who are today front-ending the engagements in, uh, in digital transformation space. At the same time, if there are some niche skills required, uh, we drop these expertise from the platform services and from the uh, TCS level units. Now, coming to the top skills um, that are required, according to us, uh, I have I've heard the panelists uh, highlighting a lot of challenges, and, and I concur and agree with those challenges. We are also going through these challenges with some of our customers. So keeping all this in mind, um, I feel there are three critical skills uh, moving forward. One is in the mm, low-code, no-code uh, development, apps development on cloud. So traditionally, uh, PLM has been a highly customized implementation all over the world because of uh, the nature of the processes, the nature of uh, the organizational behavior, a uh, lot of customization has gone. But now the need is that if you are able to bring down the customization, move towards a low code, no code area where the capabilities are available today, which were not there before, I think the deployments are going to be much faster, seamless, and uh, they're going to be much more lightweight. So we are heavily uh, focusing and investing in this area. The second one uh, we feel that is going to be very, very critical uh, is of course on the data part, but in particular, the data semantics and ontologies. Um, if we talk about digital thread and if you talk about enterprise data that is going to come from various functions, uh, we all know the heterogeneous nature of the data and the way they are formatted today with different different standards. I think when digital thread has become successful, um, all these ontologies have to orchestrate together. Whether it is on the AP 239, 242 side or whether it is other standards coming from the industry 402 side. So all of these have to be orchestrated. So data semantics ontologies, um, data integrations, interoperabilities, and data science. All of these skills are going to come together to orchestrate and leverage data in a much more streamlined way than what is happening today. The other skill um, which uh, I think is important is uh, the organizational change skill, specifically for the engineering uh, community. At large, organization change management skills have been popular, flourishing. But when it comes down specifically to engineering community, I think it has to be highly contextual. Uh, and the context switching has to happen between the business units and the IT. So a, a skill that understands this space, uh, overlaying the complete organizational change management capabilities, is something that is going to be very important because the traction has to speed up especially on adoption of cloud. Um, and more important on the on the data integration part, what we see also is emerging is that um, there is going to be a layer of data orchestration that is going to happen, which is going to bridge the gap between the ecosystem, uh, which is primarily going to drive the product innovation uh, moving forward and with the enterprises. So a layer of this uh, entire data-driven capsule, so may to call, uh, is going to emerge out, which is going to have a very strong play on the cloud. Um, in addition, I just want to share a couple of outcomes that we have seen from our engagement, recent engagements, uh, doing it on cloud. Uh, this is for a process industry. And um, the, the benefit that we have seen is in the supplier collaboration space. Uh, especially on making material visibility to the suppliers so that uh, the long lead planning of uh, procurement of materials, ensuring that the materials are compliant with, with uh, the standards that in, in every region where they have to be applied. All of this uh, got accelerated because the complete knowledge base on materials and the processes related to them which were deployed on PLM, they are made available on cloud. So the point is such small, small uh, wins and outcomes added up together, I think are going to speed up the traction. So the more and more such outcomes are required and uh, breaking it down into smaller components and addressing them, I think is going to be very, very critical. 
similarly in the automotive space uh, one of the trend and the use case what we are seeing is the closed looping between the the vehicle that is running on the field uh, the diagnostics that is running continuously and the design feature that is getting implemented on a continuous basis so essentially the objective is to deliver a defect free feature which is thoroughly validated before it is flashed onto the vehicle so this closed looping is something that is uh, becoming more and more uh, uh, gaining traction and that is why we see the automotive companies started implementing uh, mbsc way of thinking uh, bringing the digital twins and connectivity to simulation and through mbsc and then running the whole thing in the form of a digital thread so these are uh, two scenarios in addition i wanted to share thank you thanks babu indu very good morning to all of you and thanks a lot diksha and uh, parik for this energizing uh, session this morning on engineering cloud so i'm indu malhotra i look after cloud operations at capgemini supporting about 100 plus global customers and uh, you know i have the privilege of going last so i have a lot of wisdom i believe from a synthesis of all the uh, you know discussion that we had as part of the uh, panel conversations today so i think uh, just to summarize i think it's quite evident that there are three areas uh, specifically uh, in the engineering cloud space which is uh, product design which is the first one more sensitive considering the r and d uh, space and also the proprietary uh, information that it carries for that enterprise the second of course is the manufacturing piece itself where the factories come into picture and third is the product and the after sales services so all, for all of these three elements if you look at the technology components from a cloud perspective for product design of course we have uh, the gpu on demand we have high performance computing on cloud so the, from a technology perspective cloud has solved these problems from a from an engineering and design perspective similarly if i look at smart factory uh, where there was complexity in terms of uh, both uh, the you know how do you maintain the data how do you have the data at the right place because of the latency requirements and so on they have been addressed through edge computing through iot uh, and those elements have been taken care of and similarly if you look at uh, you know the whole uh, product and after sales services if you look at uh, you know we talked about connected cars uh, after sales services have been driven through that and that has been done through iot uh, ai and machine learning so from a technology uh, point of view we have all the components if you will uh, to enable and ensure that uh, engineering on cloud is possible we talked about a lot of challenges with respect to the adoption and migration of and primarily these are because of three or four reasons uh, and i think if we take the common theme across of course is the data sensitivity and security uh, combined with the regulatory requirements the second is the huge amount of data when we talk about simulation and we talk about uh, uh, gathering all the data from iot uh, you have a huge amount of data and that also leads to certain uh, increase in cost right and uh, the very interesting concept of having a collaborative model right from the design process to of course you know supply chain management and the other elements if i look at all of those aspects they are uh, today possible through all the technology that is available on cloud no doubt about it the fourth element which i think we did not talk about too much is the sustainability by design because all the manufacturing companies also have pressure on sustainability and the carbon footprint and a lot of these simulations if at upfront can have the sustainability factor also being considered it becomes very powerful uh, from a from an end game perspective because all the companies uh, global companies are giving certain targets from a sustainability perspective for the 5 year 10 year horizon so all these elements are quite important and uh, well taken care of uh therefore uh, you know if you look at it in combination uh, i think kunal talked about the cloud ecosystem i think it's a, about the entire ecosystem and do we have the right ecosystem to support uh, the needs of various functions of engineering and the answer to that is of course yes uh, but the response and the adoption and the migration could depend on the uh, way uh, each organization or the enterprise has adopted cloud what are their current systems in place what are their lock ins that they have with their own systems and so on therefore when we uh, when we uh, when we as uh, you know 
system integrators go to these customers. We have to solve their business problems. And uh, having the right skills uh, to explain that uh, is quite important. And therefore the industry blueprint uh, and uh, the guidance that we can provide at the onset is extremely important to, to carve out the right roadmap and direction for cloud adoption. And therefore coming to the skill that is required for it, you would require a skill of enterprise and solution architects who have industry experience. So that's fairly important. So that's one skill that is required. And at Capgemini, uh, we have an engineering cloud center where this has been synthesized together where specific use cases are being looked at and all these competencies are being pulled together and allows customers to do certain uh, POCs uh, and uh, you know experience it themselves so that uh, they start seeing the benefit of the experience transformation and not, you know, not just uh, adopt it and then uh, wonder whether uh, it will work for them or not. The second element, uh, Prabhu talked about it as the organization change management. It's extremely crucial. It's, uh, it's something which has been talked about for ages, but uh, we cannot emphasize on it, uh, you know, more today, especially now because we are distributed, we are working in a, a new normal where we are across globally uh, trying to collaborate on these screens. Uh, therefore, uh, this whole aspect of uh, organization change management becomes quite difficult and it has to be done through a very structured model. So organization change management, again, with the industry knowledge is quite important. Uh, if you look at uh, the engineering and design functions, uh, forget about offshoring or outsourcing. Uh, those systems are not even available to the rest of the uh, units of their own organization. So that's the kind of sensitivity that they associate with uh, that space. And uh, therefore it's important uh, we, we respect that and then bring in the right use cases which will add value to them. Uh, and that, that, has to be brought in through uh, the security specialists, right? And uh, while we have going to do, uh, do a lot of application modernization, bringing in containers and microservices, which is the technology part, and therefore you need to build skill on the containers, microservices, low code, no code, that's important. But that has to be combined with the right skills on security. So DevSecOps becomes extremely important to give in the right confidence as they take on this journey towards cloud in whichever use cases that they are operating on. So that's the second skill, which I believe is quite important. And uh, we have to do the right uh, training and both uh, with the customer as well as uh, within the uh, system integrators as well. Uh, the third point, I think Prabhu talked about it in a beautiful way is about the data scientists. So the kind of data explosion we have with the uh, IoT devices, and so on, it's important that we have the right data scientists so that we can uh, make use of this information and come up with the right uh, you know, knowledge uh, on which action can be done from a business standpoint. So to summarize, I think uh, the skills that I believe are quite important are the solution and enterprise architects, the DevSecOps, containers, microservices for low code, no code, security and compliance, and data scientists, it's quite a bit, but that's what is required because we are talking about supporting hybrid ecosystems which have private, public, fog, edge computing, so all of it together, and uh, it would require that. To illustrate an example on, uh, you know, the, the kind of reservations that we believe, uh, you know, exist today, uh, very recently, uh, this month it's on public domain, uh, Capgemini and, and Airbus have signed a deal for cloud first transformation program. So while there is a lot of resistance reluctance, I want to also illustrate that there are examples in the industry where cloud is being embraced in a very systematic way. And uh, I think it's only a matter of time where engineering and product design can move uh, very much into that sweet spot. So back to you, Parik. Thank you, Andrew. So that's a fantastic discussion. So we come to the last phase of the discussion. So any concluding remarks, and if you can share the, your top two learnings or best practices with everyone. So we can start with Nitin. Yeah, just for a moment. Sorry, uh, am I audible now? Yeah, yeah, Nitin. Thanks. Uh, so, I mean, of course, really enriching uh, conversation this morning, uh, giving uh, a variety of perspective across the value chain from 
how do we start evangelizing to deploy to uh, migrate to you know run this as a engine uh, going forward uh, increasingly what's coming up strongly is uh, cloud is here to stay uh, and coexist with uh, on premises coexist with edge coexist with multi cloud also for that matter and equally important is uh, the the journey of the customer onto the cloud uh, needs to be a smoother one and this is something that really we are trying a bit from our side to make sure we uh, start the conversation with what we like to call as cloud adoption framework uh, and so that uh, the the customer the partner in ecosystem understand the dimensions in terms of how do they plan the cost journey how do they plan the security journey how do they plan the governance journey onto the cloud so that's the that's the uh, one that will help a easier landing so to say on the cloud and uh, bring in more use cases integrate them well across the multiple uh, dimensions of business that they have right so that's the perspective i would not carry for okay thanks nagar you can go around the room karthik yeah hello so thank you for a lot of points that i was also following up to see as to what we can do yeah. so from a quick learning perspective i think we cannot uh, as we go on this cloud transformation journey one thing that is remains forefront is we cannot leave security for the end we have to embed this whole security best practices as part of a development process itself uh, and other part is obviously i think there has to be a, a little careful about how, what all resources we use on the cloud from a costing perspective because the development cost itself can escalate if we use the wrong um, uh, systems or functions because there is so much available Uh, both on amazon google or azure anything i think depending on what functions we use i think we have to ensure that we take a close look at how we can optimize those even the cloud transformation costs as well as the cost that we can then give to the customers so we ha we have to uh, uh, build the best best in class products uh, but keeping cost in mind as well so i think that also has to be an important point while we design and architect our solutions for customers okay. thanks karthik maybe kunal Yeah, I think um, uh, obviously there's a tremendous opportunity to transform, uh, you know, with, with digital thread and all that stuff. But my point is, I think this is also an opportunity for enterprises to look at the way they do their process and maybe adopt things like model-based enterprise, model-based design, um, you know, model-based system engineering. But really use that in conjunction with the technology enablement um, to actually be able to do this in a different way, in a better way, which is far more collaborative across the entire supply chain. I think that's my my take away and key message thanks god very much yeah so first of all thank you nascom for giving me an opportunity to participate over here a uh, lot of perspective with views show that cloud is no more a buzzword right a lot of experience already there and a journey to uh, continue from here so a couple of learnings that as i was talking about the data the way we organize and the volume of the data is the challenge and that we have to solve all together and uh, provide a, a facility to take that data seamlessly from my environment to the cloud environment and second thing uh, learning is the native cloud development that will enable to be more organized and that provide a way to execute or take leverage of the cloud uh, facilities so there are a couple of uh, learnings and key input for the next level of actions over here thank you thanks mahesh asif Yeah, thanks, thanks, Nascom, and thanks for for having this session arranged. Uh, my take on this one is like uh, uh, every organization in some way is engaged with the engineering cloud. Uh, they may not move everything in the cloud immediately, but they have certain pieces running in the cloud based on the requirements. For example, somebody is want to have data driven design. Somebody want to put the smart products and bring the data into cloud and then improve the design. Somebody want to go ahead and improve the services. Somebody want to use the AR augmented reality. For doing the you know, service uh, based on the instructions available in the remote areas where they don't have access to any other access, but they can use this uh, uh, cloud instance. So the idea is like every organization is looking on the depending on the uh, pain areas, the problems they want to solve. They're trying to figure how better they can utilize the cloud. And we have solutions in bits and pieces everywhere available. The technology is available, and we are also moving towards where the demand is more. we are trying to make those things available so i think uh, going forward like most of the things the engineering department like to do will be available as a part of the cloud or software as a service solutions okay thanks asif prabhu 
yeah so one is to uh, attack one capability at a time because we are going to deal with uh, big ticket items like uh, CAD simulation and now we are hearing something like analysis design co-design co-simulation all of this is going to be even more bigger so attacking one capability at a time incrementally and continuously will yield better results the second is uh, technical in nature which is focus on performance management uh, if design engineering has to be successful i think cad has to be successful and at the same time simulation has to be successful so a strong governance to address the performance related continuously and incrementally again is going to be a key thank you thank you abhishek yeah parik so uh, parik i think uh, it was a very enriching discussion and i have taken almost two pages of notes from all okay. the panelists i Thanks. think uh, actually we should probably make a compendium or yeah, some yeah. we'll do that i this. guess Uh, later on but two things which i wanted to just highlight from my perspective which i did not hear very well the one is uh i think i have seen that the adoption of cloud or the or the or the basically the acceptance of cloud is much more in a greenfield environment in a greenfield setup right. as compared to a brownfield because there are resistance to change in a brownfield setup engineers are too much passionate about their tools and their solutions they don't want to let it go but in a greenfield setup a new factory coming up or a new product line coming up i think we should definitely try cloud out there to make it cloud native in the first instance second is uh, what i have seen in the si that customers are looking for very vertical or domain specific solutions so while we can talk about cloud but that alone is not good enough for them to make the business case they are looking for very contextualized uh, focus solutions which can solve their business problems up front obviously cloud is a backbone but i think we have to bring in a lot of domain and use case perspective when we are defining solutions for our clients and that is helping us in a lot of cases to accelerate their time to market for their products uh, to bring the efficiencies so i think as as partners for our customers uh, we have to keep the aspects also in mind yeah thank you thank you thanks abhishek salman yeah so uh, i i guess uh, as organizations are looking at adopting engineering cloud i think we as system integrators will continue to focus on the cloud engineering aspect of it so this could be our technology advancements like software defined networks could be 5g adoption and by all of this we basically look at increasing the value chasm for our customers thank you so endo thanks parik so i think the first uh, lesson probably on a lighter note is not to go last in these kind of sessions <laughs> so but having said that i think uh, it is quite evident uh, that industry experience uh, is far more important than just the technology experience and therefore the industry blueprint is uh, going to be important to determine the cloud roadmap and adoption that is what will help accelerate the adoption as well if you we go with the right uh, use cases and business cases to the uh, clients and i think it's our responsibility to do that so that's one and second is uh, the whole uh, uh, skill upgrade that needs to be done uh, along with the customers so while we talk about co design and we talk about uh, you know other aspects we also have to look at developing the skills together so that we can take away the overwhelming uh, complexity of cloud and simplify cloud for our customers thank you bala yeah thanks parik uh, yeah that was uh, a lot of learning crammed into a, an hour of uh, morning so it's like I, my day is made so from my from my uh, perspective right say though we uh, rather than looking at cloud as a solution for the customer we look at the customer first and then what problem can we solve uh, by taking cloud into his uh, uh, domain right like uh, how to make his life better you know better faster and cheaper right so yeah we, i was always wondering when i joined uh, the 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 install of the application specialist used to take a cd all the way to the hospital and install right so these days is just a push of a button you can uh, of course uh, reach him so how do, how do we make uh, you know if you think from a radiologist or from a hospital perspective how can we make his life better by our technology that will uh, at least make you think uh, you know where all we can uh, improve so that's one key aspect of my learning this yeah. 
Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Bala. Last one. Thanks, Eric. So this really excellent discussion. Lot of learnings. Uh, two points I just wanted to. Uh, share as a learning. So customers are going in phased approach. So they want to do that assessment and come up with whatever the prioritized use cases and then getting into the migration in terms of uh, whatever the return on investment pays for them based on their uh, problem areas, either in the design, manufacturing or in the aftermarket. The second one is uh, mainly while we talked about uh, many things because always there is uh, legacy and the latest uh, tools and technologies. So there should be an integrated collaboration platform. So everyone has to build that so that it is completely integrated and uh, uh, connected. So either through the off the self platform or as a customized uh, the development for their own needs. That is going to serve for their current and future needs. That's where they will be able to take care of the end to end uh, life cycle. That's a thing some of our customer is uh, going towards that. So that's one good approach so that uh, that will take care of the future needs as well. Yeah, that's a two points from myself. Thank you. Thanks, Gautam. Sanjay? Yeah, correct. Uh, thank you. And first of all, excellent session, everybody. Uh, you know, I'll give the learnings from an SI perspective, given that that's the role in, uh, and I think some folks mentioned about it. Uh, you know, uh, when we go and work with the, you know, work with the customers, I think the customers know the business the best. Uh, but as an SI, the best practice that we've seen is to understand the objective as to what do they want to achieve. Uh, and then enable a transformation that achieves that objective. That's part one. Uh, part two is that, you know, given that this is much more complex than the regular application or the product work that we do, uh, some folks also mentioned this is to do chunk size, bite size portions, ensure that works, uh, spread it across the organization as a standard and then move on to other pieces. Uh, I think that's how our approach is uh, uh, working with our customers. Thanks, Sanjay. Demon? Yeah, thanks, Parikh. Again, I kind of uh, agree with everybody. It was a really uh, insightful session. And if we could just condense this knowledge and think, and we are all set, I mean, we are set for a very successful ERD transformation. All that we have to do is, you know, put the puzzles, put the pieces in the right place. I'll probably go ahead and talk about three points uh, instead of two, Parikh, if you allow me. Yeah. So one is obviously uh, keep experience at the core, right? Uh, let's not take this as a technology transformation or a cost optimization story. If we keep experience at the core, we have seen that we have can cross a lot of hurdles. In, in, in fact, all those mental blocks and mindset blocks also are easily resolved. So keep experience at the core when we talk to customers. Second is have uh, domain-oriented reference architectures, right? So have very specific industry uh, flavor domain oriented reference architecture, uh, which actually becomes the foundation of the change management. We've all spoken about change management. It's a very complex topic, but then what are we changing here, right? So this uh, reference architecture will actually provide a foundation to that. And third is, and we spoke about it, I just want to re-emphasize data security and sustainability. These three topics has to be, you know, the starting points of conversation and not some of the aspects that we take care of later. Okay. Thanks, Devon. Uh, thanks, Varik. And uh, uh, I think all the main points are already covered by the uh, our esteemed panelists. So uh, I have nothing to add, <laughs> nothing left. Here. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. So thank you all. I think it was a very engaging and interesting discussion. So over to you, Vanna, for concluding remarks. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And thank you so very much, leaders, for such an invigorating session. And we had some great insights from all of you, uh, you know, from different points of view, which has helped us to understand this topic at a much, much deeper level. And I'm sure all of us are really enriched from this roundtable discussions and have a lot to ponder over today as well. So to share a few key points from today's discussion. Uh, so first of all, engineering cloud, of course, has many advantages, such as uh, decreasing time from design to manufacturing increasing operational efficiency, enhancing safety. And it also you know, acts as a single source of truth, providing a framework uh, with an aim to provide an experience transformation for all stakeholders. So for ISVs, uh, we heard that you know, their focus areas, some of the focus areas for them include scalability, ease of cost, et cetera. And cloud provides a large platform uh, for them to integrate, integrate all tools 
and uh, we also saw that how smaller companies have higher access to you know high computing and cloud provides that seamless upgradation updation and integration as well and it is you know also acting as a, a you know it is also acting towards removing barriers between different departments as well and there is a flexibility to collaborate and faster innovation from anywhere and of course you know, uh, for enterprises, the, the design activities are being migrated to the cloud uh, for reducing the turnaround time and how cloud enables uh, them the ability to process a lot of information, uh, you know, in a shorter span of time. And how now we see that industries are moving from a product centric to a customer centric solutions and where, you know, a mindset change is absolutely necessary. And we see this across all sectors from semiconductor to automotive, health, steel, everything. And uh, we also see that newer use cases being seen in semiconductor industries. And of course, we see uh, in CPG retail as well and uh, in auto specifically EV and uh, auto aftermarket as well. So some challenges that we heard today included the design volumes and executing these designs in a short span of time. Of course, cybersecurity, data security, data privacy, uh, you know, remains a key concern. And how we see that these engineering tools are also legacy in nature and they have difficulty in adopting to newer technologies. And what we see is that the way to mitigate these migration risks uh, is to do a proper planning, including data organization, stakeholder management, uh, of course, investing in uh, skilling and uh, training of the talent. And it is also really important to see these challenges as opportunities and take it up in a case by case uh, manner and solve these problems. And uh, upskilling of solution leaders, uh, you know, comes up, comes across as a key point. And uh, so that they can acquire these capabilities in cloud and other uh, cognitive solutions as well. Some top critical skills that we heard today were, uh, you know, regarding low code, no code development, data semantics and ontology integration, science, data science, uh, and of course, organizational change development. Uh, one key thing in the light of uh, data security and cybersecurity uh, that has come up, uh, one key skill is of course, DevSecOps. So of course, it's very difficult to share all the viewpoints together, but these, are, these were some of the points that we discussed. And I would like to really thank our moderator, Parik Jain, for moderating such a diverse set of in, you know, industry leaders from various backgrounds and work experiences and London time. So thank you so very much, Pari. And uh, we'll all keep you posted on the next session as well under the NASCOM's Cloud Advocacy Program. Uh, so thank you once again for coming together today and sharing your insights. So thanks everyone. I would just request everybody to kindly uh, wait for a minute uh, while we stop the recording. Yeah, thanks. Thank you so much.